Hello, friends. We are Mackie and Judd, and we are on location, not only from Declan's babysitter lair, but from Judd's home office. I'm down in Phoenix, Arizona, visiting my dad, and uh, we've got Judd's keys on this episode we're going to get to later on. Judd's keys making a big return for the 2021 Viking season. Uh, so we'll get to that in a little while on the show here. But we are all about daily Minnesota sports entertainment and championships and uh, and also your feedback, which we do on Fridays. Are you guys ready for a little little feedback Friday action here? Yeah, man. Most definitely. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. So I got to be honest here. The first one is not really feedback. It's just a fun talker. So And, and there was a ton of responses from people when we threw this out there. Uh, we'll get to some other questions and comments here but i think we should start this feedback friday with some feedback from the betting markets specifically bovada Mm. and bovada sportsbook they sent out a note today and it was essentially entitled odds on favorites for which team ben simmons will play for first game of the season and the Philadelphia 76ers was, were a plus 200. They were leading the pack somehow. They're still the odds-on favorite for him to just stay in Philadelphia. The Minnesota Timberwolves were a plus 300. The odds-on favorite to land Ben Simmons via trade. I think another sports book had something similar or maybe had the Wolves right behind the Blazers. Correct. I feel like two or three months ago, this was all clickbait. It's just made up. It's reckless speculation. You guys are just making stuff up. And now the Vegas sports books are saying the Timberwolves are the odds on favorite to trade for Ben Simmons in the next few weeks. What are your thoughts? I think it's a thousand percent accurate. And I think so. I think that the the people that do these odds are probably almost. Um, obligated to speculate that he'll stay with his current team because like they can just essentially hold him hostage. Uh, but that being said, I think the odds of the wolves uh, being the favorites is exactly right. And again, in talking to uh, Doogie during the scoop session on Thursday, he said to reiterate, the wolves are very, 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 I think he used three, very interested in getting <laughs> Ben Simmons. And, and I don't know, Phil, if you saw the, the uh, windy uh, speculation out there, or not speculation, more reporting, Brian. But the windy wind horse. So it, so Doogie told us that Windy is very close to Ben Simmons' agent, and what Windy threw out there a couple of days ago is one: Ben Simmons is due a pretty decent chunk of his salary by like opening night, so they can't take that away. They owe him that, and I think NBA players like most sports get paid when the season starts. So Hmm. like they can find him for missing training camp, but they can't, they can't sit on his salary. completely. Interesting. So they don't, they don't get game checks like NFL players do. Um, I don't know how it works, but the point is his reporting said that the Sixers are obligated to pay Ben Simmons what he's owed with that chunk immediately. So there's like, no, we're going to withhold that. Uh, So, so that's one thing. And two is, the Simmons camp, and I'm sure this one came specifically from the agent, the Simmons camp has informed the Sixers it's not Ben's job to get his value back up. Essentially, it's your fault because your coach came out and doubted him when a reporter well, asked at the end of the playoffs, and they said, we have no interest in like Ben trying to redeem himself as a Sixer. We want him out of there, and you need to take what you're going to get, which obviously is going to be a huge fight. But nonetheless... That's how bad things are. Like, like that is a that's the talker of the disintegration of the relationship where yeah. they're saying where they're basically telling Daryl Morey and the 76ers, it's not our job for him to be good. It's your job. It's your job to take what you can get right now. Mm-hmm. This thing is jumped at the shark. I feel like the Wolves are the Sixers fallback prom date. It's like, oh, we, let's uh, we can always we can always go to the prom with the Timberwolves. You know, they're out there just desperately sitting over there, just w- waiting for us to walk by in the hallway, right? Just, Acne, just yeah. begging us. <laughs> Corduroy is a little too short. They've never seen an NBA team naked before. Yeah. The Timberwolves. Sounds like, sounds like my junior prom, but yeah, sounds accurate. Yeah, uh, and it's like you know the, the Wolves. I think the Wolves. I'm just envisioning Gerson Rosas, <laughs> friend of the show, calling Daryl Morey. Five six times Swingers? a day, Swingers? yeah. Just leaving vo- leaving voicemails yeah, like really. John Favreau. Hey, I think my last hey, message got cut off there. Well, I wasn't sure. Sorry about what, 
That'd what be happened. I mean, it was fun talking, and <laughs> I really enjoyed it. I mean, and the Sixers are sitting over there, like, okay, well, Portland, please pick up. Uh, Washington, Bradley Beal, please pick up. Golden State, you got anything? Can we get James Wiseman? A couple first round picks. There's like seven teams they'd clearly rather deal with. Otherwise, this thing would be done with the Timberwolves. And the Wolves are like, hey, we're just going to be sitting here if you want to make this happen. Hey, look, even Vegas, even Vegas thinks you're going to trade him to us. Let's yep. just make this happen. I don't know if 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 the Blazers aren't going to trade Dane Lillard. And I think this was part of the reporting today. It might have been from a di- – I can't remember if this was part of the Windy report or if it was another insider, but – uh, but word is Dame is not asking out until at least some way, somewhere halfway through the season. Like he's he wants to enter another season with the Blazers, which is weird to me. And Bradley Beal is quote content right now. I think this is from the Athletic. Um, Beal is content in Washington, which also is mind boggling. Like, dude, you guys have been with those teams for ten years or eight, whatever it is. Why do you not want out in the minute that either one of those guys asks out? the Sixers get a ton of leverage back because they'd rather deal for those players. But if those players aren't going to ask out before the season starts, the Sixers might have no choice but to trade Ben Simmons to a team like the Timberwolves for like 50 cents on the dollar. The Wolves have the leverage here, I feel like, by just having been patient. I don't know if they're playing it brilliantly or if if they're just pestering and getting lucky because the market hasn't played out the way that the Sixers want. But the Wolves are in a great spot regardless. So the Beal thing I really don't get. That is a dumpster fire of a franchise and has been it for the most part weird. for a long time. Yeah. The Portland thing I actually get because Portland has Portland has ebbed and flowed. And I sort of get why Dame would, would say, you know, new coach here. I'm going to I'm going to take a step back and see if we can reestablish success. The Bradley Beal thing. It's like, dude, you've been stuck with the wolves of the East Coast for how long now? But, yeah, I, I think the Daryl Morey problem is that he's looking at this like James Harden. And I don't think we're talking about James Harden. I think we're talking about Ben Simmons. Great defender, has some attributes. But, like, overall, he's not the player that Harden is as far as the sexy aspect of we traded for him, and he is coming off a terrible playoff. But when you have the Ben Simmons camp basically telling the Sixers it's your job to get his stock back up, like, that's a – I'm not saying that I agree with the camp, but that's, but, that's but ridiculous, that's, by the way. It is, but that <laughs> but it's a very telling part of how fractured this entire thing is. Like right now, this is the most fractured relationship in this league. And and I don't think Ben Simmons has the I don't I don't think he has the cojones to do what Jimmy Butler did. But he definitely seems like he's going to make things yeah. dicey if they keep him around. Listen, I want the Timberwolves to land Ben Simmons. I think this is a great time to buy low on a guy that is, I think, going to have a bounce back. He's probably going to become a better shooter, but that doesn't even matter. So if that, But that part of it aside, if you think about this and just go sort of month by month as to what's happened since the playoffs. So Ben Simmons cowers in the corner in the, in the playoffs <laughs> refuses to shoot layups. <laughs> That's my favorite part. Right? Of the he bricked like 70% of his free throws and was just an absolute disaster in the postseason, right? <laughs> so so he shipwrecked his own value by just being worthless in the playoffs. And fast forward two or three months later, him and his agent are now demanding out of Philadelphia, basically saying like, I'm sorry, I can't deal with I I can't deal with this organization anymore. I right. can't can't believe how mad they are at me for cowering in the corner in the fourth quarter of playoff games. Right. And then on top of it, his agent, Rich Paul, who's also LeBron James representative, um, and that's how Brian Windhorst probably knows him because he covered LeBron very closely in Cleveland. And Rich Paul saying, yeah, listen, I mean, it's, it's not it's not our fault that you guys have shipwrecked his trade value. No, he shipwrecked his trade value by being terrible in the fourth quarter. This isn't the Sixers' fault. The Sixers probably didn't make it any better. I would argue, too, that Shaq and Barkley jumping on Shaq's podcast this week and trashing Ben Simmons also hurt the Sixers in this. Because yeah. just there's just there's nobody standing up for Ben Simmons except for Gerson Rosas. And even he's like <laughs> He, he, he's probably telling Daryl Morey. I mean, he's not that good. I mean, I guess we'll take him as like a guy off the bench or something. Uh, here's Michael or here's Malik Beasley and a second saw, round pick. I saw a stat tweeted. I think it was yesterday or two days ago. Somebody tweeted this and I didn't check it, but it looked great because it's just so mind boggling. I think Ben Simmons missed more free throws in the playoffs this past spring than Nash did in his entire career. <sighs> what? They're... In the playoffs, you're saying? It just Yeah. In in the play yes in the playoffs That's Ben Simmons missed more free throws 
in the playoffs than Nash did in, in his entire career, I think in in the playoffs as well. Got but I mean, okay. we're talking we're talking sense. the springtime versus but, an entire array of, of a guy who went to the playoffs with what Dallas and Phoenix a ton. Well, so Steve Nash would have had to have gone. He went to the finals once, right, or, or came close to it. He went to a couple Eastern Conference finals with Phoenix. I don't remember. I don't, I, and, but, yeah. I don't think I don't know if Steve Nash ever played in the finals, but and and he got he, he was mostly one and done in Dallas. They never really had. I think, but he played a bunch of there, playoff. But he, but he played in a bunch yeah, of playoff. Probably games. Had at least fifty to one hundred playoff games. I and assume. if Ben Simmons missed more free throw attempts in one playoff season than Steve Nash did in his playoff career, that is mind boggling. Okay, hold on. I've almost got this here. Okay. So so Steve Nash. Steve Nash was 396 for 440. So he he took 440 free throws and he missed 44 of them oh, yep, that's, in his that's playoff his career. Okay. Yep. Ben and, Simmons, I think, missed more in the spring. Oh, my God, dude. And so Ben Simmons <laughs> missed. It's it's not quite that bad, but it's close. Ben Simmons missed 30 free throws. No, dude. He missed 30 free throws in just the Hawks series. Oh and he missed, God. and you're right. He missed 18 free throws in the yep. Wizard series. He beat him. So he missed. He, he missed 48 free throws in these playoffs, and Nash has missed 44 in his entire. Nash played in the playoffs for parts of 16 years. Yes. <laughs> Think about that. <laughs> Think oh about that. God. But you know what? I want him. I don't yeah. care. I do not care. He doesn't have to be the star central figure of this team. He doesn't have to be the second guy. He might even not have to be the third guy if they keep D'Angelo Russell, especially offensively. He can just play defense. He can settle in. He can rim protect a little hey, bit. He can pass. You I'm know here what? For it. I want fun. I want the Wolves. I want as many storylines as I can possibly get from this godforsaken franchise. That's what I want, okay? Yeah. So so if it works, it, that's awesome. If it doesn't, it's still more fun. I want the Wolves to be as compelling as possible because I've always contended if they can just get to the point of being compelling, I think people care. Yeah, I agree. I mean, we saw it. We saw it, you know, 15, whatever, years ago. Um, all right, Feedback Friday here, presented by our friends at Federated Mutual Insurance Company. Federated is all about keeping your business safe from risks. Um, it's easy just to think about the top line and revenue, but make sure you're also preventing and protecting against things that could chunk away at your uh, at your revenues and uh, your bottom dollar too. So federatedinsurance.com if you want to find a full list of industries they protect and all the resources. And remember at Federated, it's our business to protect yours. Luke Burnt on the Score North YouTube page comments, it's not looking like Kaprizov will be here for the start of training camp. Get it done, Wild. This is driving fans insane. He doesn't have any other options, so just sit down and figure it out before it's too late. Um, I think Luke speaks for a lot of worried and frustrated fans right now. Why are these two sides not just kumbaya after what happened last season? Because I'm convinced, and, and Dex and I actually talked about this on Mackie and Judd on Thursday, and I wrote, wrote about this at uh, Zolgad's Roundup, which I'm now doing at scorenorth.com. You will enjoy that. A very notesy type of breezy column I'm doing at Score North. Very shooter-like. Very shooter-like. Um, a little birdie. It's very clear that Kaprizov's agent, who he hired after he fired his previous representative, has promised him some things, and he's not going to get those. And I think one was, we'll get you a three-year contract and walk you right into free agency. And Bill Guerin, rightfully so, is saying, no, no, you won't. Here's five years at $9 million per, which, by the way, for a guy who's played, what, Dex, 55 regular season games and then wasn't great in the playoffs – is very very fair, and I think the Kaprizov camp's like, oh no, no, you know, we're we, we want three years, maybe four years, but not five years. Right. Um, the Wild is doing the exact right thing here. He needs to come to the realization that he's going to get a five year contract, and after that, if he wants to leave, he can leave. But if you're Bill Garrett and you let them push you around when they have no leverage, that opens up the floodgates for a lot of people to start to cause you problems. So. I'm not always on the team side, but in this case, I 1,000% am. If you're Bill Guerin, you sit there and you play hardball, and he signs this contract, and if the agent made promises to the Caprice family or to Kirill himself that he can't keep, if you're Bill Guerin, that's not your fault. Yeah, it's frustrating, and what I was telling Judd is I, I refuse to believe that this is all just the agent. Like, Kirill has to have some type of vigor all against the Wild or some type of demand here that we're not being talked about. 
or that's not being talked about. Um, I definitely think the agent is driving the majority of, of this negotiation. But if this was up to Kirill, I think he would have just said, dude, all right, I'll take the five-year contract. It's $45 million. I'll get $9 million per. That sounds excellent to me. I'm 24 years old. I'm going to have $45 million before I'm 30 years old and just American money. I have no idea how much he's made in, what is it, rubles in Russia? Um, so so Good old I, 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 I do think there's something more. Is it rubles? Just, uh, rubles? Rubies? One of the, uh, Something? I'm, Hold on, no. let's see here. You, you look rubles. that up for me. I think it's rubles no, or I, I think yeah. it's Russian currency. Rubles. Uh, let's see right. here. Let's see here. It's the it is the ruble. It hey, is ruble. the Russian yeah. ruble. Yeah. Yes, that is I know my Russia. Nice. Nice. Um, and then the, the, Russians. the final thing that uh, also Michael Russo pointed out is when he gets here, he has to still apply for a U.S. and Canada visa. We aren't sure if he's actually vaccinated with Moderna, Pfizer, or the CDC and NHL approved vaccinations. There's there's talks he might only be approved or have the vaccination that Russia has given out, which is not Moderna, Pfizer, or Johnson and Johnson. It's so, rubles. So they had to, it's, they it's, shot it's, him up with rubles. <laughs> it's ah, a completely ruble. different thing. So there, there's there's so many hurdles still, even before the contract with Kaprizov, and what looked like was going to be a really fun off season and, and, a, and a wild one pun intended wow, it's dude. actually been Look kind of right it's kind of been uh, wow, a little disappointing wow. but you've got to hold your ground here and and i really do believe that that the problem is somebody needs to sit the kid down and say krill here's the deal you spent an extra what five or six years in russia after you were drafted by the wild in the fifth round in 2015 that stopped your clock like you didn't have your clock running and now you and now you want to explore free agency asap you can't have it both ways like if you had come over when you could have, uh, this would not be an issue, and you could probably be a ranger by now. But you didn't do that, so it, it's just I, I think he's 24, so he's young enough. Uh, promises were made. He's very good, so he probably thinks he deserves these things. I'm sure at home he's treated like a superstar. All of that, uh, but I think Bill Guerin's doing the exact right thing, and I would play hardball too. Mm. Uh, so what? So we're thinking it might be a nine million dollar. Offer by the wild per yes. year. Yeah, I think right? it's. I, I think it's. I think it's a solid concrete. As I told Declan, sitting in somebody draw, somebody's drawer in St. Paul, five years, <laughs> mm. nine million. Uh, can you guys guess how many ruples that would be? Oh, I, God, I, how I, many I, ruples is nine million dollars? It's rubles or ruples. Uh, it's ruble. Uh, ruble. I'm sorry. Rubles. Okay, okay. Rubles. Yeah. I have no. I. I have no nine idea. Million, uh, I, I, Just take a guess. Closest to the pin. Eighty-five. Wins a, wins 85. a high five. Uh, um, um, 80, 85 rubles equals nine million. Yeah. Uh, no U.S. Idea. dollars. I have no idea, dude. <laughs> I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say. I don't know how Russia works. Two hundred fifty rubles. Wow, you guys. Um, it's actually six hundred fifty-five million. Rubles equals no nine million. I, I, seven, it's it's seven seventy three rubles equals one U.S. dollar. Okay, that's how that works. So maybe when his agent was saying, "Hey, hey, you better watch out. He's got a big contract. He's got a he's got a massive multi million dollar contract." Maybe he meant multi million ruble contract. Yeah, right. you know, because it's uh, seventy three times as many rubles as a dollar. And that league is gone now too, because they started on on September first. So yeah. that threat is basically gone. He can he better, play hockey. He better get a better deal by September first. Uh, he can play hockey in one leave. place, and that is for the Wild. And if he does not want to play hockey, he can find a new career. Uh, Victor Flint comments on the Scorn Earth YouTube channel. Feedback yeah. Friday. Forty years' experience as a defensive coach should enable Mike Zimmer to be more efficient in his analysis of an opponent, development of a game plan, and a practice schedule to support it. Doesn't being a defensive genius require a deep understanding of how offenses work? It's ridiculous that we excuse Mike Zimmer from offensive responsibilities. Listen, Victor, I'm going to let you off the hook here. You you made this comment before Mike Zimmer said he and Kirk Cousins watched film together for the first ever time this week. What more do you want from your coach? He's watching film with the quarterback now? Oh, I, wish I don't I know why you're there. so critical. Hey. It's just like the good old days with Teddy, right? Sit down and watch that. Turn on the projector. Turn off the lights. Turn on the projector. Oh, yeah. <laughs> maybe, leave, maybe leave the lights a little bit on. It'd be a little weird. I don't want to sit in a dark room with Mike Zimmer. <sighs> Zim. Zim what did you make? He tolerates yeah. offense is what he does. He tolerates it. He doesn't embrace it. It is. Don't you think it's weird? I mean, to Victor's comment and then to what Mike Zimmer said today. Yeah. I read that. I just I read it from Courtney Cronin, and I, was, my, I had to read it like four times. I'm like, wait. It, 
is she saying like they sat down to watch film for the first time this season or for the first time ever since Kirk Cousins got here? Is, it, is that not a common thing that most head coaches do sit down and like geek out over film with their quarterbacks? I don't know. That Mike Zimmer's he, never done it before. Well, he said he, I guess he said he used to do it with Teddy. So he definitely has with quarterbacks he likes. Um, but it, that definitely read at least the way that I read that quote, that definitely read like this is the first time Kirk and I have sat down and watched film, not this year. So, and, and it's interesting that Mike also volunteered up that it was Kirk who said, let's do this. W- would you please basically sit down with, it was a very odd, almost like an olive branch from Kirk is, to, yeah. to try and be like, Hey man, I, I know we don't get along, but I'm so was, you was, was Kirk sitting guy. in like a plexiglass booth and Zimmer was sitting they were out the by the goalpost or... outside. <laughs> I don't it's know. like 10 feet apart. The, that whole relationship, <laughs> is, <laughs> that whole relationship is so hard to figure out. <laughs> it really, it is. really is. It's really confusing. Uh, Tommy Johnson. I don't, I don't think there's any relation to the old Vikings defensive tackle here, but Tommy Johnson says, I imagine not many Vikings fans remember that Rashad Hill started the Minneapolis miracle game. He did all right against the Saints in that playoff game. Why are we all so worried with him against the Bengals? Did Rashad Rashad Hill start that game? Okay, in two, I, I know this for a fact. In 2018, the year that Brian O'Neill was drafted in the second round, Rashad Hill was the starting right tackle until I think um, I think Brian O'Neill took over for the last 11 games. So Rashad Hill definitely a starting experience at right tackle, and he played a little bit at left tackle. Um and yeah, it's very possible he started that game, but that's one game. I'm still concerned about it. Um, uh, he did indeed. So he well, he also, he also started the 49ers game yep, the following week, and that was kind of a disaster. So uh, wait, yeah, wait, actually, actually, it says wait, he wait, only. Actually, I take that back. He, no, this is this is. Uh, so I'm sorry. He started the Minneapolis Miracle game, and yeah. then he also played Philly in the Philadelphia game. Okay. Um, he played one snap against the Saints in the next playoff oh. game that they won uh, two years later, and then he also then he played twenty one snaps in the game against San Francisco. Okay, so I guess if you really want to pick nits, he has played uh, eighty eight snaps in two of the most lopsided Vikings playoff losses in recent history. And he's, but look, he but he played pretty well in the Minneapolis Miracle game too. So. But look, I mean, I'm not trying to to criticize the guy. He's he's a backup. He's a backup for a reason. He's a career backup, which is fine. I mean, that's an important player to have. He certainly does not suck at football, but he's your starting left tackle. I don't, for, I, I, for I don't, the foreseeable future. I don't know that this is a rippable offense for the Vikings. They drafted Christian Derrissaw and didn't think that his injury was going to linger this long. The plan was not for Rashad Hill to be starting a bunch of games. Um, cool. you, I mean, I don't know. I guess if you want to rip them for not like doing medical due diligence or something, I don't, but I don't. I'm just, all I'm saying is it's still, you don't have to rip them to be concerned about the player starting. Yeah. And That's I'm fair. concerned about this. And look, if it was one game, I'd be like, you'll get through it. Uh, but Christian Derrissa is taking part, I believe, right now in individual drills and practice and then going to a weight room to rehab while the Same. team practices. And, and I think Zim uh, on Thursday said, we don't know. It's going to be a process. Is that the quote that Mike a l- said? A long process. A long. OK, yeah. so he ain't starting until after the bye, if then. And so now you're talking about a career backup playing an incredibly important position for an undetermined amount of time. Yeah, that concerns me. Uh, Bob M says on the Scorn of the YouTube channel, Billy Evers. How, how are we pronouncing interim Twins manager? Is it Bill Evers or Bill, Bill Evers. Evers? Bill Evers. Evers. And and this comment was before the Twins lost tonight. But Bill Evers is four and zero as Twins manager, hmm. and his in game moves are a hundred percent or a hundred times better than Rocco Baldelli's. The Twins actually steal bases. They hit and run. They have better lineups, and his bullpen management is A+. Plus. Um, have you guys determined enough after one week of Bill Evers that Rocco Baldelli should just stay on paternity leave, or are you needing another week? First of all, Rocco gets credit for all of those wins. Those all go Does on he? Rocco's record. Yes, Why? they do. Rock, I don't know because it's the baseball way. Rocco gets credit for, for all four wins. 
Second of all, uh, Bill is retiring right after the season, and so it's not going to be yeah. him. Well, unless they want to make him a major league manager. <laughs> Potential candidate to replace Rocco. Uh, but you know what I did? I did like on with the with the with the um, start that Ryan made two nights ago now on Wednesday. Here's what I really liked about that. Polanco was at short. I believe Arise was at second. Andrelton Simmons sat. And guess what? The lineup worked out really well. It worked out perfectly. And that also means that the Twins claim that we want Anderson Simmons to start at shortstop because of his glove behind all of our young pitchers is absolute garbage because Mm -hmm. Ryan is your most important pitcher right now. And like, if you're going to give him a defensive stalwart, you would give him Simmons and you didn't, which by the way, I agree with, but let's end this charade of what we got to play. Andrelton Simmons. This is, I much prefer you rotating guys in who I want to see play right Mm -hmm. now, as opposed to this, this notion that they went back to on Thursday, which is, well, Andrelton's our shortstop. Stop. No. Yeah. I, uh, I will raise my hand and say, I thought that was a great free agent signing because he is a great defensive shortstop, but he also has put up one of the worst offensive seasons of any twins hitter in the history of twins baseball. And they're still running him out there on a fairly regular basis. It's kind of weird. I kind of feel like he tore the clubhouse in half with COVID stuff early in the year too. And uh, that's not just my reckless speculation. There, there's been some tension in the Twins clubhouse throughout the year. How can there not so, be? Yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a thing. It's a thing probably in the Vikings locker room too. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, upset of the century that, that Andrelton Simmons is likely going to make it to the end of the season still in a Twins uniform. Not sure I would have would have bet on that at the beginning of June. I am looking forward to the the jettisoning or allowing to walk of Alexander Colome and Andrelton Simmons both. Goodbye. Bye. See you later. Don't care what you did. But you know what's going to happen, though? They're I don't know if Simmons is going to bounce back offensively, but you know Colome is just going to be lights out for whoever he there's pitches a mutual for next option. year. There's a mutual option. There's a there's an off chance he returns, but I wouldn't. I'd be like, see you later, dude. You you submarined our season in. You and Simmons submarined our season in April. Beat it. There's going to be a Lance Lynn factor. I should I should go on the record right. next week with I'll write, write that, that down. down yeah. prediction. Thirty saves next year. Thirty saves ERA under three point two. Right, something yeah. like that. Yeah, write that down. Declan's right. Yeah. Write that down. Um. All right.